Welcome to the Symbols and Society lecture entitled Symbols Matter. To start off with, I want to give you a bit of context of the anthropology of symbols. Where does it fit into anthropology? Well, at the highest level, anthropology is thought of as being composed of four fields. There's socio-cultural anthropology, which I do, archaeology, which is looking at um, basically bones and stones from the past, linguistic anthropology, which analyzes conversations and ways of talking and how that builds community and so on. And then there's physical anthropology, which looks at the physical properties of, say, my bones compared to those of a chimpanzee. And they're interested in all kinds of primates, not just Homo sapiens. In addition to those four fields, there's also a fifth field, which is applied anthropology, which is normally socio-cultural anthropologists going to fieldwork locations and trying to do good. So as you've gathered, sociocultural anthropology is my field, and that's the field that um, anthropology of symbols fits within too. Anthropology of symbols is one of the sub-disciplines of sociocultural anthropology. Some of the more recent sub-disciplines include studies of food, eating and drinking, of popular culture, relations between humans and animals, digital anthropology, uh, anthropology of the body and mind, and then there are the traditional sub-disciplines of socio-cultural anthropology, and these include kinship and marriage, legal, political, economic anthropology, anthropology of religion, and what you are studying with me now, anthropology of symbols. So to sum it up, anthropology of symbols is one of the sub-disciplines of socio-cultural anthropology, and socio-cultural anthropology is one of the four main fields of anthropology writ large. Why study the anthropology of symbols? Why is studying symbolism important? One reason amongst it, others is that some symbols express that which is really, really important to us. And what I'm talking about here is the values and um, beliefs that we would live for or die for or, for example, die with. Um, I've got different examples here of the values of like the male surfer or the fisherman, the values of um, Isis, of a biker, the national values associated with the soldiers suffering and giving their lives for us, um, religious values associated with Christ. Within subcultures, the values associated with like guitar, the Gibson guitar, or um, you know, within drug cultures, the, the symbol of the bong. Um, expresses certain values and in sort of street cultures especially on the west coast the values associated with a low rider one of those cars that goes up up and down um, while stationary on the street if that makes sense uh, these are all important values that people die for and die live for too and will die with for example if you the owner of this car might get buried with it. I have heard of people being buried with their bike, buried, in this case, this guy was buried with his guitar. Um, so the, in this case, the guitar symbolizes all of the meanings that are associated with his rock, rock subculture. I can imagine a stoner would want to get um, buried with her bong, for example. So I'm going to look at one example which came through there, which is um, that of the biker. And I'm particularly looking at the there are different biker cultures all around the world and they're all unique. Um, but one of the classic, I guess, examples is the West Coast biker culture, um, which comes from California uh, in the United States. And this is one of my favorite artists. His name's um, David Mann, and he does these kinds of uh, biker uh, images. And he tried to explain in an interview what it was all about, what being a biker was all about. It's about the code of the West. It used to be all that bikers shared a common, be that all bikers shared a common bond. Uh, don't take any shit, be kind to women, be cool, stand tall, never lie or cheat. Your word is your bond. Your uh, word is all you have in life. You're a true knight of the road. Don't snitch. And on and on and on. If we look at the next page, he continues. Um, the biker should be a rugged individualist. Only the strong will survive. You only go out once, go around once in life. Tomorrow you could be roadkill. 
So he, goes, he tries in depth to express what is a very complicated and, um, as an anthropologist, I find quite beautiful um, set of values. Um, and of course, in the end, he finds he can't do it. <laughs> These comment commandments are more than are just a few of the broad strokes. There is a lot more to being a biker. Um, so what happens in these in these scenarios is we have all these values and a way of living a life, rituals associated like like a riding a motorbike, um, having a a um, your biker group, your your biker gang has a party, that kind of stuff, and the way you act at that. These are the kind of rituals associated with it, all of which express the code which is associated and the values or the ethic with it. Which, we, which are associated with biker subculture. So what I'm trying to get at here is there's a mass of very important values and ideas that bikers hold important that can't be expressed simply through linguistic signs like words in English, but you rely on other symbols such as, you know, the American Eagle Breaking Free and the Harley Davidson. So what we study in anthropology symbols is what normal language, linguistic normal language or normal, normal linguistic signs usually fail to express. Even when facing death, um, the values expressed through these rituals and symbols are preserved. And I take this point from a guy called Peacock who wrote a great introduction to anthropology and he defines culture as that which survives the fight for survival. Um, so he's taking the case of 1965 in Far East Java in a town called Surabaya where there are tensions rising in the Cold War between uh, communists and anti-communists. And things in East Java and in Surabaya are getting quite violent and it could could break out and in fact does soon break out into uh, an open slaughter in which maybe uh, 200,000 people were killed throughout Indonesia and, and Surabaya had a fair share of bloodshed, I can say. Um, at this point, um, Peacock, the anthropologist, is invited to a friend's house to have a, a cold drink of water. I think it would have been, um, this is the normal case for me when I'm doing research there. You get, it's a super hot day. You get invited into someone's house and you take your shoes off before you enter and you're, um, you're pressed to enter and you slowly s sit down and then you're asked to drink and the, the guest says, Mongo, Mongo, which means please help yourself. And you say, thank you, thank you but you don't take a drink because you want to show how restrained and refined you are. So this can go on for 40 minutes. You could be half dying of thirst and looking at the um, little sweat bubbles uh, dripping down the side of your drink and still not um, take a drink because you want to maintain these rituals and politeness. So it's all tied in with the mystical ideas of what a human is in, in Java, this politeness. And what you're getting there is a kind of ritual, a ritual associated with uh, drinking, or in this case, not drinking. Eventually you do drink, of course, but you don't finish your drink and that's for other reasons. And what you see there is symbols in action. You see a set of values being expressed, even at a time when Peacock was doing research where uh, people were about to die. So you might also kill or be killed over um, symbols. Um, there are certain places in the world where you could easily get uh, killed for tearing up a flag or raising the wrong kind of flag. Um, a favourite example of mine came from a Year 12 history textbook, which I've never been able to find again, so I hope it's true, of um, peasants, uh, or more, more to the point, Russian political activists before the first revolution in Russia, heading out in the early 1900s to the um, countryside and trying to prove to the peasants that God doesn't exist, that it's all, you know, capitalist and um, capitalist brainwashing. So one of the um, activists gets a cross and smashes it and says, look, if God would exist, he would have killed me for smashing this cross, but look, nothing's happened. And the peasants say, God didn't kill you, but we will. And that was the end of the activist. <laughs> so, you know, in some cultures, take another example, insulting someone's mother can be, in a certain context, can be a way to get yourself killed. Um, and people would die, for example, in World War One in Australia, Australians went to die for king and country. That was the symbol they died for, not so much for Australia. So uh, in different times, different symbols mean so much to us that we will die for them. So symbols express that, uh, 
express what is most important in our lives. Um, you can see this in relation to, for example, in Australia we have a ritual for the fallen soldiers, which is called Anzac Day, so actually for all soldiers who have served, um, Australian and New Zealand soldiers. And in it you see the kind of values that are expressed, that can't be expressed otherwise, except through, for example, the Anzac Day rituals, which include um, the, um, the blowing of the trumpet, the bugle, I should say, and other aspects of the ritual. So why well, I study the anthropology of symbols, the, the reason I suggest is that symbols express what is most important in our life. So if we can understand these symbols better, we understand ourselves better as human. There are other reasons to study it, but I think that in itself is enough, though we will look into those other reasons as the course progresses.